yo yo hello guys and welcome back to madden 20 subscriber league now before we start the episode i want you guys to know if you're new it's never too late to join the league all you got to do is leave a comment down below make sure to hit that subscribe button and give me a name and position and if go into detail what your guy wants to look like if you want him to look a certain way also understand that i don't play I sit back and watch the games of the week as we go through the year. Um, if you guys make it to a playoff game, that's when the series kind of starts to slow down because if, you know, I have a lot of subscribers on my team and they make the playoffs, I'm going to watch it. I'm not, you know, so we might watch three wild card games or, you know, freaking two division, you know what I mean? Like, it, I'm not going to let, you know, one of my subscribers... Uh, playoff experience go to waste you know what i mean so and i have a, already have a lot of subscribers now before we start this episode um there is this is like an update around the league because we have some big news as you guys could tell from the title we have some big news um in this episode so this episode is just about getting to know what's going on in the league and uh, sit down in a chat this is all live commentary um the game of the week for next episode will be the Atlanta Falcons versus the Minnesota Vikings. So my Minnesota Vikings subscribers get excited because you got you're gonna be on the spotlight next week. And this is an important game. This is why this is game of the week for me, because you have Atlanta who stands at a two and two, and you got Minnesota who stands at a two and three. Both teams that are struggling to get at 500 but are not out of the season. Now you look at Minnesota's division and it's tight. Uh, the Bears are running away with it, the Packers are out of it, honestly. But you know you gotta do you gotta you gotta win this game if you're the Vikings. So first thing we're gonna look at um, one I might as well go ahead and get it out of get it out of you know out in the open. Of course, even after a struggle, the Packers ended up trading Greg Patton and wide receiver uh, Pettis to none other than the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now their quarterback currently. He is 28 years old, William Farmer. He is struggling. He's thrown four touchdown passes, six interceptions. He's, that's my chair squeaks, my bad. Um, Greg Patton is definitely not struggling as much as this guy here. And Greg Patton is a rookie. So he's young. You can work on him. Jacksonville is already, you know, they're sitting at a two and three right now. Uh, they don't necessarily have to start Greg Patton if they don't want to, but um, they feel like, that's hey, that's a pickup for them. They already have a, an older quarterback who isn't really doing much, anyways. Go ahead, pick uh, Greg Patton up. We already know how Greg Patton is in the film room. He he know Greg Patton puts in the work when it comes to studying the game. He just needs some more time to study, obviously, and we know that he's going to put the work in. But the Green Bay Packers, they want to build for the future even more. They still have Dak Prescott to buy them one more year you know, at the quarterback position. And what the what the Packers ended up getting was a first round pick and young quarterback. Now you guys one of my subscribers submitted this player. He never got in. I forgot to show him. But what the Packers ended up getting was a quarterback who never got drafted. He went up undrafted. He's in the free agency. And that right there is Colin Kaepernick Jr. Yes, he's here. Um he is only a, he has a 64 overall, but he's 20 years old and he's got hidden development. Um, not much, not much people are talking about him right now, but I think um, he's going to be talked about later in the series. Again, hidden development—it could be anything. But he is so young, 20 years old. He's got time to develop. Packers—they grab him, they snag him, and. Uh, they also get, you know, a fir another first round draft pick. They um you know, they have some decent picks. Matter of fact, can we take a look if we go um This episode is going to be a little sloppy, guys. It's not going to be nice and edited like most of my videos are. So, just a heads up, but I do want to see um if the Packers or what how many first round picks the Packers have. They should have just um, two, I believe. Yeah, so the, yeah, they got Jacksonville. So they're looking at having their worst team in the league right now. 
and they're looking at having another one to go on top of that. So, not looking bad. I mean, I think that was a good trade for both, actually. Um, unfortunately, Greg Patton is out of Green Bay. And he's basically left Caleb Goins all by himself. That's the only subscriber now on Green Bay. And he's kind of just... We'll see. Caleb Goins seems loyal to Green Bay, though. We'll see if uh, he can get some help built around him. Now, taking a look at the... Let's take a look at the stats really quick. Because next up, we have this showdown right here. Jalen Dalton, who's having a decent season. He's been a little bit of a wild card. I think if he can cut down on the interceptions, he can be a really good quarterback. But I'm um, looking at like, oh, guys, I also didn't, I don't know if you guys realize, but um, this is in the future, by the way. I didn't really explain that, but the, the year is uh, 2028. So, and the reason I did that is to get a lot of the real players to retire and to, so I could fill the whole league with you guys. Um, so, you know, you take like what I was talking about with Dak Prescott, the reason the Packers said, you know what, let's go ahead and pull the plug, we're 0-4, we're um, Greg Patton is not the guy, is because they have veteran Dak Prescott. No, Dak Prescott isn't the star. He's played for 12 years. He's not everything he was. His arm isn't as strong. He's not as fast. But he's aware, and he knows how to play the game. He's been playing it for 12 years now. So that's why he wasn't the starter, and that's why, you know, you know, if you're expecting to see some somebody, you're probably not going to see them because they're retired. But yeah, that's all. I did that because, you know, I can put you guys in. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Looking at the best quarterbacks in the league, um, Sundberg definitely got the most passing yards. Um, who's throwing the most touchdowns? Let's see. Who's leading in the touchdowns? Thad McBride. So no subscriber. Is showing up. Deshaun Watson's still in the league after 11 years. He's doing he's doing decent. Um, and who's thrown the most interceptions? William Farmer. And look at that. See, and that's why Jacksonville has traded for you know Greg Greg Patton because they have the quarterback who's thrown the most interceptions in the league. They and they're still standing at a two and three record. So I think Patton should get the start, honestly, in my opinion. But hey, I'm not the coach there. Now, Luke Carn Carnahan has probably been the hottest subscriber quarterback as of far, and we haven't really got to see him play yet, but he is he's throwing for 76%. I mean, he's doing really good. Um, as we go down, look for more subscribers. Will Cons, he uh, has promised you know Seattle a championship title, um, and so far he's doing it. As my phone goes off in every freaking episode. But so far, he's doing his part. He really is. Nine touchdown passes, only two interceptions. Not bad at all, honestly. Um, right under him, Quashawn Hill the second. Nine touchdown passes, three interceptions. Not bad. Dray Drayton Glendening. Um, you know, I, I don't even want to... <laughs> I'm so sad right now because I just thought back to Louisiana Tech's uh, playoff game. I don't know. If you guys haven't seen that, make sure to go check out that series. It's on Maximum Football 20. It's really good. Lamar Jackson. Um, I mean, here's all the subscribers. Oh, look at that. Patrick Mahomes still in the league after 11 years. Jimmy Calvin, the only person to not throw an interception yet. Uh, is there a record for how many? What's the record for? You guys maybe look it up for me. Let me know. What's the record for... Uh, most pass attempts without an interception as a rookie or yeah because jimmy calvin might be trying to break that i'm not too sure what it is though um sam darnold 5-0 and as well jason demarco man oh and see we're gonna get into teams that are surprising this year um in a minute but this player in particular is pretty surprising also i'll go ahead and edit your guy buddy um i know you said he's white and I made him black. My bad. Um, you guys gotta let me know. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna know unless you tell me. And I just leave him as as that face. So that that'll work. But yeah, Jason Demarco. Big surprise. I thought he was gonna be. You know, he seems to be struggling a little bit here. You know, opening his career up. But uh, I think he's going to be great. He's gonna be great. I just um. 
honestly did not expect him to be taking this long to get there. We'll see if he can turn it around though. Um, Bryson Heyman keeps the start in New England, even though a lot of people were thinking um, the subscriber should have, John should have got the start over. Nolan Price, he's still, I mean, what's happened with him? He's only thrown it 98 times for, like, is he hurt or did he get hurt or something? What's happened to Nolan Price? Yeah, he hasn't thrown any interception, but he's only thrown four touchdown passes. I don't know. The Atlanta must not be throwing it a lot. Then Trey Wright, we seen him last episode. Um, man, I think out of all the subscribers, he's probably had the most rockiest start. You know, he's he took a little injury, um, which wasn't severe. He, he was fine. He's fine to play next week. But he's thrown five touchdown passes, four interceptions, 65%. He, he's, he's definitely struggling. Um, of course, Greg Patton, you got to mention him down there, only completing 53% of his passes. Uh, D.K. Smith. Has been phenomenal. He's just not throwing the ball much, honestly. I don't even know if he's still starting. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think he would have lost the job. I mean, he hasn't even thrown an interception yet. Um, so, yeah, then the new subscriber here, yeah, he's had a decent start to his career. Of course, Dak Prescott's going to be the starter in Green Bay from now on. And, yeah, okay, so moving on to the rushing. We're not going to take too long in every – Every aspect, but Ezekiel Elliott dominating for the Cowboys. Quam, say Quam Barkley, um, Buddy Knight. He's the best running back out of our subscribers yet so far. But Rico Mayo Jr. is definitely not far behind him. Um, let's see as we go. Zach Keister right there. Averaging 3.7 yards, four touchdowns. Dino Thomas, the subscriber, right there behind Zach Keister. Not far off either. And I want to see now, let's see who has the most rushing touchdowns. Saquon Barkley by, by a landslide. Um, yeah, okay. It's kind of what we expected. Caleb Goins, the only subscriber in pack Green Bay now, holding it down. And look at that, Luke Carnahan, the quarterback. There's Brock Breeze, guys, from Louisiana Tech. You see him there, um, not, not a bad start. As far as receiving goes, um, see if there's any subscribers that make it any, anywhere in the top. I don't see any, so that's unfortunate. Um, as far as re touchdown receptions, Clifford with seven, Davis, and no subscribe. Oh, there's a subscriber, Lucas Rose with four, and there you go. So those are the the um, stats. As far as defense tackles, here's the top guys right here. I'm not going to go through all these, but I do want to see who has the most sacks for subscribers. Um, if, if there's any up high dang no subscribers holding it down what's, what's up what's up with my subscribers man well maybe I pass hopefully I pass one you guys let me know but um yeah so there's the stats in the NFL guys we are going to take a quick look at um at the standings and what teams I thought would be better and you know what teams have been kind of disappointing so first off the Bears I think they're they're definitely been the most surprising to me I didn't think that they out of all every team in the league would have a 5-0 start <clears throat> they're the only team undefeated um, so they have definitely surprised me and what's crazy is they're not even you know the top offense as far as scoring they're all the way they're in fourth um, but you look at their defense. Their defense is like in the middle of the pack, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing that shows that they should be like dominant, five and zero, oh, you know what I mean, kind of thing. And you, then you look at you know the Eagles, who are at one of one and four. That's honestly, I didn't think that their defense would be that bad, um, but their defense is pretty bad. But the team that has surprised me the most is actually right here, the Carolina Panthers. Man, you know, they have, they're filled with subscribers, 
they even have um i think more of the defensive subscribers added to them um the pretty mixed 50 50 and yet they have given up this they're the second team in giving up the most points on defense and then their offense hasn't even hit triple digits yet so if you look at worst offenses they are definitely close to the bottom so i did not expect that at all from them um the patriots uh that's not surprising it might be to you guys but they are um you know the year is 2028 20, so their whole team is completely different um the packers actually isn't surprising i mean it's surprising that they haven't won yet but um i didn't expect them to be winning the league winning like dominating the league the bucks i i expect the buccaneers to do exactly what they're doing i mean they have Dray drayton um glendening we all seen how successful he was in college uh the broncos have a lot of subscribers expected them to do really good um, Miami, they started off hot and they're on a, a two-game losing streak. That's, um, I don't know what to think about Miami. We'll see going forward. Seattle's doing good. I think uh, Will Cons is exactly what Seattle needed. We'll, you know, we'll see if they can continue the success. Um, Atlanta, this is another surprise. I didn't expect them to be struggling at, at uh, 500, you know, with all their subscribers that they have um we'll, we'll just see what happens here there's only two teams that are winless this this um this year so far i am going to show you guys one more thing before we end the episode and that is the upcoming games for this week so if you want to talk any crap you can you can um so some key matchups as far as sub subscribers go obviously if he gets the start greg Patton will be going Right back to Chicago up to go up against the Bears for a second time. Um, we will be hopping into this one right here, Atlanta versus Minnesota. So you guys make sure to watch next episode. Uh, the Panthers at the Packers. That's going to be a good one. Um, that's a little rival match right there for my Broncos subscribers. The Cowboys at Redskins. Or Redskins at Cowboys. Um, Dolphins at 49ers. Now, I was thinking about watching this one because it's a Sunday night game and we haven't got to see Miami yet, but I decided that, you know, the game we're going to watch is a little more important. So there's this week. Took a look at week seven as well. Um, some good ones. Redskins at Bears. Buccaneers at Panthers. That's the one I think we might hop into. Depending on if the Panthers can win in week six and make it you know, the Panthers should win against the Packers, honestly. They should, you know, because they've had a lot of changes and things like that. So there it is, guys. That's what's going on around the league. Um, so I don't really, th I can't really think of anything else to show you guys, really. Like, you know, if I was to go, I do want to see thing. I want to see Miami's Al Buckner. Um, and see how he's have any sacks. That's so six tackles and not doing much. Yikesers. I'm okay, well, I think that's really all I can think of. Let me show my defensive guys some love really quickly. Um, senior, this is a subscriber. Let's see your stats, buddy. Um, so you're right. This is actually your second season. Your first season, you had 13 tackles, of course, and um. Only got four tackles now, so no interceptions yet for you, buddy. Um, as far as I can't really think of any other. I don't have them memorized, guys, on what team you're on. So I do think that the Bears have a new subscriber named Baxter, Jason Baxter. Yeah, let's see how he's doing, see how your stats are going. So one sack and two interceptions, and we actually got to see that sack last episode. So... All right, that's it, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. You've seen the standings. Um, you guys, let me know what you think about the series, what you think is going to happen in the league. Who do you think out of all these teams is going to go all the way? I know it's hard to tell this early, but you can kind of have a mindset of who's going to at least make it to the to the playoffs. Here's the way the standings are looking, guys. Um, pretty, we've got some close ones, and then we've got uh, some blowouts. So... 
good um good start to the series, good start to the season. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.